Welcome to Electro Online. Before we show you the first of the many techniques of factoring, let's do one more of these types of examples because I wanted to show something very specific here. We're trying to find the greatest common factor which includes both the numerical coefficients and the variable coefficients. So let's start with the numerical coefficients. We had the numbers 18, 15, and 12. So what's the greatest common factor? Well, we could do it by trial and error, or we can simply take each of the numbers and see what they can be written as. In other words, we can write them as the product of their smallest factors. So 18 can be divided by 2, that gives us 9, and 9 can be divided by 3, that gives us 3. So 18 can be written as 2 times 3 times 3. The number 15 is divisible by 3, and that leaves us with a 5, so 15 is 3 times 5. And the number 12 can be the written, let's see, first we divide it by 2 to give us 6, and then 6 can be divided by 2 to give us 3. So to find the greatest common factor, what we want to do is find all the common factors. So first of all, the number 2. We find the number 2 here, we don't have one here, and we have two of them there. So since we don't have the number 2 on one of the three numbers, 2 will not be part of the factors. How about the number 3? We have two of them here, we have one of them there, we have one of them there. So we're going to circle the 3 where it appears the least number of times. It would either be here or there. The number 5 only appears there, so which means the largest common factor in this case is going to be the number 3. That means the numerical common factor we can pull out will be the number 3. What about the variable portions? Well, we have an x and a y. What we want to do is find the x and the y with the smallest exponent. So starting with x, we have an x cubed, we have an x cubed, and we have an x to the fourth power. So the smallest exponent is 3, which means we can pull out an x cubed. The smallest Exponent for y, well, we have a y to the fourth, y to the first, and y squared. So the smallest exponent is y to the first power, so we can pull out a y to the first, which means that the, the greatest common factor would be 3x cubed y to the first power. Which leaves us with 3 times what gives us 18, that would be 6x cubed x cubed, well, we already pulled out the x cubed, so that's gone, and we need a y to the third power because y times y to the third gives us y to the fourth, plus 3 times what gives us 15, that would be 5, we already pulled out the x cubed, so that's gone, and we pull out the y, so that's gone as well. Finally, the third term, 3 times 4 gives us 12, x cubed times x gives us x to the fourth, and y times y gives us y squared, and so here's how we find those three terms remaining after we factor out a common factor. So we can say, if we now want to write it in a more sequential order, we can rearrange order those two, but we really don't have to do that. So we can see that 3x cubed y is the greatest common factor. Numerically, we can find it by looking at all the factors and only picking those that are common to all three. And again, only where they appear the fewest number of times. And for the, for the variables, we look at all the exponents and we factor out the variable with the smallest exponent of all the terms that are there. And that is how it's done.